Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Kim, otherwise known as the Booker Harlot because I love all things Booker Prize related. And Booker season is upon us. Now, um, I started filming this a couple of days before the long list is announced, but this will go up after the long list is announced. So I hope you are all having a great time with the long list and supporting authors by buying their books from independent bookstores and doing all of the reading and the research and having a great time. I'm sure future Kim is very excited and probably uh, a little anxious about getting her hands on all of the books because this is a UK prize. I live in Canada. Publication dates tend to vary by about six months and sometimes I can't get a hold of all the books even by the time that the um, winner is announced. Um, this is more of a struggle for Booker International. However, this year where uh, I was able to get a hold of 12 out of the 13 books and normally I can maybe get a hold of five or six of them. So this has absolutely been a stellar reading year for me. Right, Ricky? Yes. So I thought for this reading vlog that I would sort of do an ode to the Booker and uh, get to the second last uh, International Booker 2023 book. And that would be Ninth Building by Zhu Jing Zi, and it's translated by Jeremy Tiang. And I thought I would also listen to uh, Victory City by Salman Rushdie. I drive a lot, so I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um, and Salman Rushdie, I'm going to be right up front and tell you I'm completely biased about him. Um, he's one of my favorite authors. Midnight's Children has to be in my top 10 of all books of all time. It is that good. Um, and I just think he is the quintess quintessential author of magic realism, which I adore. And I also think that um, he'll be nominated for the Booker long list. Um, he's been nominated many, many times before, and I've heard great things about Victory City. All right, so let's get reading. So I have just finished uh, Ninth Building, and I am so impressed with this book and this writer. Uh, so thank you, International Booker, for bringing this into my life and bringing this new-to-me author into my life. So um, in terms of how to describe this book, um, I would say that it's a mixture of Cursed Bunny by uh, Boro Chung, also long-listed, short-listed for the Booker International last year. And Children of Paradise by Camilla Gradova. And I'm listing those two books because they both made me very uncomfortable. There was a lot of writing about bodily fluids and waste and um, a little bit of debauchery. I guess that's what I would call it. Um, I also think it's a mixture of Homesick uh, by Jennifer Crock being that the plot is about this author reflecting on his boyhood in Beijing during the Cultural Revolution and um, a portion of his life when he was taken to the mountains um, in China and had to undergo hard physical labor every day. So I wonder if it's a memoir and like Homesick, um, it, it was both um, a memoir and fiction. So in uh, North America, it had it was labeled as a memoir, but in um, across the pond, in the UK and Europe, it is listed as fiction. So I wonder if this book um, had the same sort of examination or debate around that. Um, in terms of structure, it's told in the first person, and there is such a mature voice to this. 
uh, but I'll get into that later. It's told in two parts. So the first part takes place in the ninth building in Beijing, which is where he lives. And the second part is in the great northern waste in the mountains. And uh, then at the end, there is a series of uh, poems. And this is told in vignettes, which I love. Uh, but you can, when poets write fiction, I think that the structure of vignettes just emphasizes their um, brilliance even more. That's Manu at the door. She's one of my other cats. I'll be right back. So this is Manu. She was at the door. She very rarely makes an appearance. And hopefully there won't be any more distractions. So the book is told in vignettes, which I think um, particularly poets do incredibly well. Uh, the writing in this is exquisite. There were moments in which the writing took my breath away and I had to stop and just go back and read the last paragraph or read the last sentence. Um, the sort of snapshots of all the different moments uh, in this author's life or during the, the character's life um, is brutal and it's haunting and it really depicts a different life than one we're used to. And I think it's horrifying to know that that this author grew up like this, or that even an entire country has to live with this amount of poverty and brutality. Um, it's heart-wrenching, this book. Um, the first part of the book, in which he is a boy in Ninth Building in, in Beijing during the Cultural Revolution, really was hard for me to read and I didn't think I was going to get along with it because I think it's very, very difficult to write as a child and um, speak through a child's voice. But this is done so well. There is a scene that just it, it stuck in my head in which um, the kids who are so used to all of these brutalities, like all the men just disappear in old women are, are beaten in the streets and this is there's just such a normality to it but there's this one moment where the kids all make up this different language and they become this sort of fortified little group that speaks their own language to get through the tragedy that they have to go through and endure every day it is beautifully beautifully done um so I am thoroughly impressed with this book. I would highly recommend it. Um, I am so glad that it has come into my life. So uh, now we are going to go on to uh, listen to the audiobook of Victory City by Salman Rushdie, and it is narrated by Sid Sigar. Dog. Hi, Ripley. Just picked up Ripley from her groom, and she looks very, very pretty. And I also finished listening to um, Victory C City on audiobook, and I am having a stellar reading week. Now, the Booker Long List has been announced, and sadly, this did not make it, but I am so glad I read it. This is quintessential Salman Rushdie. Now, if you've never read Rushdie before, he is um, the magician of magical realism. And I know he's a love, love him or hate him kind of author, but I really think that with Rushdie, you need to give him a hundred pages. And that was definitely the case for this book as well, because his scope is so massive and epic. You really need that time to get to know the world that he's building. And trust me, it's worth it. Um, and you know, he, he is a favorite of mine, so I am completely biased about this. So Victory City is takes place over 250 years. The main character, <laughs> the main character is named Bumpa Gumpana, which is, it's a mouthful, uh, but the narrator did an awesome job with it. Um, and she is a female god, and she builds this kingdom and this city called Victory City. And um, 
at the end of her life, and this isn't a spoiler, she writes a narrative poem about those ec epic 250 years and all of the things that happened to her um, and this dynasty. And there is this narrator who discovers this narrative poem and is telling us what he's reading. Now, I know I've read some reviews where people think that this narrator is Salman Rushdie himself. And sadly, because of uh, the attack on him, he didn't get to promote this book. So the question really hasn't been asked to him. But as far as I can tell, I don't think it is Salman Rushdie himself. I think that's too simplistic. I think that this is probably um, a character that he's built himself. Now, in terms of vibes, this book is really giving me uh, The Gospel According to the New World by Maurice Condé, uh, translated from the French by Richard Philcox, because it is so epic in nature and it's so layered and there is so much going on in this book. This is definitely a book to read and reread and reread because I just like The Gospel According to the New World, every time you read it, you're just going to get something new. Um, where do I start? <laughs> so this book has also been called, um, it's definitely magic realism, but it's also been called fabulist in that there are lots of fables that are going on. My knowledge of that isn't very big, so I think I missed out on a lot of it. But I really, the, the writing is absolutely stunning. I really would sit in the parking lot uh, and just to listen to an extra five minutes of it, um, I would highly, highly recommend that you get to this book. It was stunning. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I appreciate your time. Please like and subscribe. I will be having a Booker uh, long list reaction wrap up um, video coming out very shortly in terms of the research I did after the long list was announced, as well as if you're from Canada, I'll have some publication dates and where you can get the books um, as well. And I'll be doing a rather silly July book haul as well in the next couple of days. So thank you. Please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye. Want to go for a walk, Ripley? Want to go for a walk, honey?